Zhou Guanyu is average. Facetious, I know, because for all the criticism being flung his way, Zhou has not done too badly in his first season of Formula 1. Keeping it clean. Mostly. And showing relative consistency, which is more than can be said about some other rookies in recent years. But the narrative that he is the great hope for China in motorsport is a bit silly. Because right now, there is a prospect with more talent and more trophies than the Bottas sidekick could ever dream of. Let's talk about Yi Yifi. Born in Xi'an in the year 2000, it wouldn't take long for Yi to find success in karting, winning the national championship in 2011 and 2012. He then made a step into European racing where, despite having to cope with some average machinery, he didn't look out of place. In 2015, Yi progressed to the French F4 Championship, but even with two wins at the end of the season, he really struggled, and eventually ended up 12th in the standings. Where is this world-class talent I talked about at the beginning, you may ask? Well, the answer to that would come in the 2016 season. Yi won 14 out of the 23 races and took the title, which earned him a move into the Formula Renault Euro Cup and a place in the Renault Sport Academy. But of course, entering the Renault Euro Cup as a rookie that year would be no walk in the park. I'll reel off some names here. Robert Schwartzman, Dan Tictum, Max Futrell, Henrique Chavez, Alex Pironi, Richard Vashore, Jano Obmir, <laughs> and Sasha Fenestras, Yi's teammate and the eventual champion. Yi himself did a respectable job as a rookie, taking three podiums and finishing as the third highest rookie behind Tictum and Futrell. Remaining with Joseph Kaufman Racing in 2018 and with an equally stacked grid, Yi was expected to fight for the title. And he did scoring victories in Monza and Hungary to end up third overall and ahead of current F1 rookies Oscar Piastri and Logan Lieutenant. This was all good news as Yi would graduate to a championship renowned for its fairness, loved for its parity and praised by people within the racing industry. FIA Formula 3 hmm. Driving for high-tech alongside Vips and Pulcini, Yifei really struggled, for no explainable reason. His below average qualifying results and failure to amass more than 4 points over the course of the campaign meant that he would be out of the Renault Academy come 2020. Now left with a seat in Euro Formula Open, a series with a great car but a less than amazing grid if you can even call it that, this was a backward step for Yiffy. His dreams of ever reaching the promised land of Formula 1 seemingly over. But he still did the best he could given the circumstances. Yi won 11 races and took the title with a dominant display in Barcelona where he won each of the 4 races. Even though the grid was quite light, doing that against some decent drivers like Zane Maloney and Louis Foster wasn't something to be scoffed at. This would end up being Yiffy's last race in single seaters as he moved to compete in the Asian Le Mans Winter Series at the beginning of next year. One of his teammates was Ferdy Habsburg, who is a special character in his own right. But him and Yi would take the LMP2 category by storm and carry G-Drive Racing, along with their other teammate Rene Binder, to the Drivers' Championship. The performances Yi put up in the Middle East gave him positive momentum, as well as giving him the chance to race alongside Louis Delatraz and Robert Kubica in the European Le Mans series with Team WRT. Even though this was the first season in prototype racing for the Belgian team, they made their mark. Yi, Delatraz and Kubica won three races on their way to the title with Yi usually having the longest time in the car in each race despite being WRT's designated silver driver. By the way, the silver ranking is usually applied to young drivers graduating from single-seaters or for fast amateurs, although Deleda is a silver as well, so take these rankings with a pinch of salt. Just like most things that come out of Christian Horner's mouth, these three wins earned WRT the European title and brought Yi a lot of plaudits from insiders within the paddock, although his most impressive performance would come at the biggest race of all. The 24 hours of Le Mans can be considered as the ultimate test of a driver and their machinery. It is the place where the really great drivers get separated from the good ones, and Yi, once again competing for WRT, drove a flawless race, making no mistakes and setting lap times that were on average comparable to drivers that had been driving in LMP2 for years. The team took the lead and entered the last lap with a gap of nearly 40 seconds to the sister car, victory almost in the palm of Yifi's hand. But then... Switch, master switch, restart, do a full restart of the car, please. Oh, oh no! Oh, it's a number two car, it's a 41, 31 car. It's 31. It's a 41. It is the 41, it's the leader. it can't be. It's the leader. It can't be, he's turning it off and on again. Oh boy. I cannot start, I cannot start. It can't be fuel. 
Last lap. It can't be fuel. It's the, it's the leading car on the final lap of the race. In Beach. the most despicable twist of fate, Year's number 41 WRT car ground to a halt on the final lap when the throttle sensor stopped working. This heartbreak did not take away from Yi's performance, however, as he had shown to all the world that he was worthy of winning the 24 hours. At the end of the year, Yi signed with Porsche to become the Porsche Motorsport Asia Pacific selected driver, which is the step just below becoming a fully fledged factory driver. His 2022 season didn't yield the same spectacular results that came the year before, with just three podiums and a pole position being his accolades in the ELMS with cool racing. Results don't really paint the full picture, however, they don't show that Yiffy developed to a more complete level. They don't show that he's become more consistent, but thankfully, the right people did see how well he drove. In 2023, Yi will join the burgeoning hypercar category with the Jota team, driving a Porsche together with last year's LMP2 champions Antonio Felix Acosta and Will the Lad Stevens. Being the youngest driver in the category, Yi has already proven in his short time in sports cars that he is not just a talent for the future, but one of the drivers to look out for in the World Endurance Championship. For however much marketing power and media plaudits F1 would to put behind Zhou, it is Yi Yifi who will carry the torch for China in motorsport, and he can even end up as a world champion. Hopefully.